first thing we want to do is we want to create a variable that will store this div. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say const div el, which is the name of our variable, and then we'll just use document get element by id example. And notice I'm using autocomplete. That really, really helps. And that example is coming from right here because our id equals example. The second step is to create a function. Um, and we'll just call this on change. And we'll just alert inside the function this works. Okay, so the third step is to attach the function to an event listener. And look at the event listener as the glue or the thing that connects our on change function to the actual event that's happening. So we'll say div el and we'll do add event listener. And the type of event we want to listen to is mouse move. So whenever we move our mouse over this div, our on change function will be called. And the second argument is the name of the function, which in our case is on change. So if this works, we should see an alert, and we do. So that's really good. So we know everything's hooked up right. So the fourth step is to go inside of our function, which is on change and change the style of the element. So in my case, I'm going to change the uh, div el's background color. So it's dot style dot background color to red. So let's see if that works. And it does. So this was a good start, but let's make it even more dynamic. The way we'll do that is we'll add a, an event parameter to this function. And this will take in a mouse event, or really a mouse move event, but the important thing is that it'll take in a mouse move event that will have an offset X and an offset Y. And this will give us the relative position of the X and Y and the div. So meaning that the center will be about 396 divided by 2 times 396 divided by 2 for the X and Y. So let's go ahead and use that to... Um, to change the color. So we're going to change it to, we're going to use red and blue to create really cool purples. So we're going to say red, we'll say percent x first, and we're going to set that equal to event.offset x divided by 396. And the reason we say 396 is that the total width, if we look up here, and the example is 400, but we have to minus 2 on each side for the border. So that's why that's how we get 396. So this will give us the percent x. And let's also do that for the percent y. And we'll say event.offset y divided by 396. And then what we can do is we'll say const red equals percent x, so we'll let x control the red times 255, which is the maximum amount of color you can have in an RGB model. And then we'll do const uh, per, uh, blue, we'll do the same thing, except for with percent y. Oops, <laughs> no big deal, 255. And then what we can do is we can use a templating string to set the color. So this is where things get pretty cool. RGB, and we can say red, comma, zero for green, and blue. Let's see what that does. So we get like a pink here, kind of a purple, blue here, do a dark blue to a purple. So we can mess around with that, which is pretty cool. We can also do more things. Just to show you, we can do um, a border radius. So we can turn it from a square to a circle. So we'll do border radius. And notice I'm using the autocomplete. And the most that we want for the border radius is 50%, because 50% border radius is basically a circle. So we can let that be controlled by the X, just as an example. So we'll say um, percent X times 50. 
and that will set the border radius. So let's see if that works. So we get a circle to a square. That's pretty cool. Now this is where things get a little funky, is that we can do degrees. And you can see I've already done this. So I have my degree variable right here. You're probably wondering, like, what's that degree variable? So let me just do this degree equals zero. So we'll set it equal to zero, and it's got to be a variable. It can't be a constant because it's going to change. And the property we're going to use is we'll do we can do movement x or movement y. Let's do movement y just because for the heck of it. So what we're going to say is degrees plus equals event dot movement y, and this will give us the number of pixels that moved in the y axis, so up and down. And then what we can do is we can say div el dot style dot transform and we need to grab this this translate x uh, x by negative 50 percent because that's what's centering it because we're doing a position fix so we want to make sure that gets applied first so it stays in the center and then the second one that we want to apply is a rotate so we'll do rotate and then we'll do oops degrees and DG. So you got to be sure you do the DG just like you would in CSS. So in theory, this should rotate and change colors. Let's see. So as I go down, it rotates. Go up, it rotates. And down. So that's pretty cool. One thing we could do um, that I think would be kind of nice is a button. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll add a button right under here. So we'll do div.row. And I'm using, um, uh, what is it called? I should know this. Uh, milligram for the CSS. So div.row, div.column, and then button.button. And then you can see it just generates that. So it's some Emmet for you. And then what we can do is we can say reset. So let's see what that does. That gives us a reset button. And then we can attach an event to it. So I'm going to give this an ID. I'm going to call this BTN because we only have one. So we don't need to make it super specific. And then I can say const reset BTN equals document dot. This time we'll use query selector just to mix it up. BTN. So we're just using a CSS selector right here. There. So now we have our reset BTN. We can just follow the same pattern. So we'll create function and we'll just call it reset and we'll attach an event listener to it. So let me scroll down a little bit so you can see it a lot better. This time we want to use the button. So reset BTN, add event listener, and we want to listen to the click event. We want to call the reset function, like so. And now what we can do is we can just uh, reset everything. So we'll do divl.style.background color, and we'll set that to white. So let's test that out. So let's make this something funky and reset. So that sets it back to white. We can reset the transform just to the translate 50% and take off the rotation. We can also uh, reset the border radius. Border radius. So notice using the IntelliSense and all that stuff. And we'll just say 0%, or we can just say zero, I think. And then we'll set the degrees back to zero. That should just reset everything. So let's get this in a, definitely a funky state. It looks pretty funky. So a pink circle, and it resets it back to a square. So that's uh, how you make uh, elements dynamic in JavaScript. Uh, you can apply this to anything. Hope you had uh, fun with the video. If you have any questions or any comments, uh, let me know, and I'll catch you in the next uh, next video.